the first name that appears in the documents of incorporation of the Friends of the Mission Cultural Center is that of Mauricio Santos. Since at the time he was the only founder that was a proprietor of real estate in the city. <laughs> the requirement by law, since in this neo-colonial situation of California, if you have no property, you don't count as a citizen. <laughs> Having studied medicine, he had landed a job at a morgue that allowed him to buy a home in the city. So when asked why he had quit his job and dedicated himself to the arts, he answered, Me cansé de destazar cuerpos. <laughs> and his passions had become a theater. By the time in the university, we had become interested in the study of anthropology, music, and rituals. We explore, we explore in our travels throughout Mexico and Central America. In our search, we found ourselves visiting the, the remote town of Jesus Maria, two hours by plane from the Peak Nayarit in Mexico, in the barren and desolate Sierra del Nayar, to be present and participate in the festivities and rituals of the Chencho Father of the Uto Aztec indigenous nation of the Coras. Of the rituals, Moros and Christianos, Casa del Venado, Los Graciosos and others, the dance of the Urracas was the one that most attracted us. The most, the most attracted us performed by nine male dancers in addition to an infant young girl that danced to the music of fiddle, tambor, and maracas in a repetitive rhythm of tap dancing that lasted for, from morning to sundown for the days we were there. The morning of the day of the transfer of powers, the urraca led us to the, in the procession to the church where the priest had been expelled and the seat set aside for the Urraca students before the Santo Entierro, patron of the saint of the coronation. Patron saint of the coronation, the effigy was brought out and unveiled for his coffin where he lays throughout the year and being shown only during Holy Week and the change of power at the end of the year. As he was presented to the audience, the male urracas leaned back showing their genitals to the divinity, which they aired with fans made out of blue urraca feathers that they had also wore in their heads in a gesture of fertility and rain for the coming years. As we were led out of the church, the town that for days seemed barren and desolate, all of a sudden, burst into commotion of local visitors with choles and choras dressed in their finest and colorful costumes that signaled the beginning of the transfer of power. We were the only participants from the outside. In front of the main council building in the central square were 12 small bulls or toritos made out of cane reeds. The council members grabbed then setting them on their heads and proceeded to run throughout town, refusing to give up their positions as principal. At this point, the Moros, who had been for days circling and crossing the main square in their horses at the sound of Chirimia and drums, broke ranks and pursued them, violently pushing them and pulling them, and finally bringing them back to the main square to relinquish their post. At this point, to our surprise and before our naked eyes, the physical reenaction of the Aztec calendar began to take place ritually, as illustrated in the sunstone as the living form of a transfer of power. Pandemonium and celebration followed throughout the night, found the next day Coras and Micholes passed out in the street and sidewalks on the town. Back in San Francisco, the impact that the ceremony had made on us motivated Alfonso Maciel, who had also traveled with us to Jesus Maria, to paint a life-size reproduction of the Aztec calendar in the main gallery of the Palmetto Museum. <laughs> a country house located close to San Francisco State 
that have become a meeting and gathering place for students and artists that will be instrumental in the mobilization, acquisition, and purchase of the Mission Cultural Center. Mauricio Santos went on to participate in theater with Teatro Gusto, whose face appears as the central image on the poster of the play, The Compras, of which he was the main protagonist. But to me, the masterpiece became his reaction to the, to the closing of the Palmetto Museum. A country house that we have baptized as Palmetto Museum was owned by the next door church that wanted to demolish the building and build a parking lot. We have worked and, and transformed the place with murals, sculptures, and performance that were to be destroyed. During the farewell, at the end of the reception, Mauricio remained overnight and refused to leave. The next morning, we were called... Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, next, the next morning, we were called and to negotiate since he had arranged an altar in the main room, sitting naked in the lotus position, <laughs> protesting the demolition. After three days of talk and negotiation, they allow us to remove the murals, take whatever we wanted, since they were going to destroy it, the house anyway. So this was the way in which the Aztec calendar was rescued and reconstructed for the opening of the Galleria at the Mission Cultural Center. The crazy determination and performance of Mauricio determined from then on on the imagery that identified the present, the logo, character, and purpose of the objectives of the Mission Cultural Center. <coughs> Finally, another influence of Mauricio was the friendship since childhood of Luis Echeboyen, theater acting teacher of Roque Dalton at the University of El Salvador <coughs> and pioneer of radio and television in El Salvador and the Bay Area, who died in anonymity during the pandemic and who merits recognition for his legacy to the San Francisco Mission Cultural Center. Thank you.